which is not a lot at all for a seven day trip. Now, when I looked at the prices for the same accommodation that I was staying in June in August, the prices had quadrupled. So this is gonna be the second video in a series where I'm gonna break down exactly what to expect from various different countries that you want to visit. I'll be telling you what to expect, where to stay, and the best things to do. And today, we're talking about Croatia. So for me, Croatia is one of the most underrated countries in Europe. It's beautiful scenery, has beautiful towns, and is inexpensive. But there's just simply so much to see, so much to do, that it can be pretty overwhelming to where you even start your trip. So what I'm gonna do for you in this video is break down exactly what I believe to be the best way to see the country. And for me, the best way to see this country for your first trip is to work your way down the Asiatic coast north to south. A lot of people generally start in the middle of the Adriatic coast and fly directly into Split. But I believe the best place to start your trip is in the north of the Adriatic coast in a small town called Zadar. Now there's a number of reasons why I think you need to start in Zadar and I'm going to break these down in this video. First of all, the the most crucial reason which will save you the most money is it's so cheap to fly into Zadar. I've literally just done a search just before I recorded this video and in June of this year it's £43 return. Now some people might say that's because of Covid and people aren't flying as much but when I went in June 2019 it was £50 return with EasyJet. So that proves to me that this is consistently a cheap airport to fly to and is the perfect place to start. Because first of all, you start in at the north, working your way north to south. So that makes the most logical sense. And from a money saving perspective, you're gonna save easily a good £80, £60 by doing this. So what is there to do in Zadar? Well, the town itself is beautiful. It's a small, old, medieval town, which is pretty inexpensive to actually stay in. It's very cheap as well to see the sites that is in the old town. It's, it's inexpensive. I'm talking a few pounds just to go into a church, climb um, a clock tower, go into some of the museums that it offers. And so I think you can easily spend a day just going around the town trying some great food. Uh, and that brings me quite nicely to the next point. The food in Croatia generally is so good. And hand on my heart, the best pasta I've ever had in my life was in Zadar. Now, I've tried to look into it to find it just for you in this video, but it's not actually on Google Maps because a lot of these places are independent and they rely on footfall to keep their revenue up. So I'm hoping with pandemic and what's happened that it is still there. But what I'm gonna show you is exactly where to see it on Google Maps. And here's a little bit of street view um, and the building there it doesn't really look like a restaurant. That is actually exactly where it is. So if you do find yourself in Zadar, I highly recommend this place. Um, now, if you do have a little bit of a sweet tooth, um, one of the best gelato places I've been to was in Zadar, and it's called Ice, Ice Cream Shot Donat. I probably have pronounced that wrong, and apologies if I have. I think it was in sort of English pounds, I think it was about two pounds for like three scoops. Um, so it's not expensive uh, as all of Croatia is, and, and you'll find that out as you go. Now, for, if you're going to the Adriatic coast, I'm guessing that you want to have a swim, and Zadar has some great spots for it. What you'll find now as you go through Croatia is there isn't actually a lot of sand beaches. It's mainly pebble beaches around the coast and due to the hot climate it kind of doesn't matter what time of day you go on I generally like going in the evening because the sunsets on the energetic coast are absolutely stunning and the best spot that I'm going to recommend to you if you do go to Zadar is a small 10 minute walk outside of the old town is a great little swimming spot which is mainly used by the locals certainly when I was there didn't see many tourists and it's a great spot so if you do want to go swim I highly recommend going to this place now there's a number of day trips you can take from Zadar but for me one of the big reasons why I started the tr my trip from Zadar is because it's the closest city to the Asiatic coast where you can go to Plitvis Lakes National Park. Now this is one of the most beautiful national parks in all of Croatia. I'm sure you probably would have seen so many pictures and videos of this national park. It's worth the visit. It's about an hour and a half drive from Zadar itself. You can get arranged to get a coach 
from Zadar to this as well, which is what I did, and the coach is very inexpensive. But the lakes itself is absolutely gorgeous. You kind of walk, I, I can't even count how many waterfalls there are, but you find yourself going around from waterfall to waterfall to waterfall, and the colors of this, it's like a really amazing turquoise green and so many blues, and it's a beautiful place. You can easily spend about five hours there. Um, I'd always recommend as well, booking in advance. You can purchase tickets on the day to enter the national park. I believe it's about 15 pounds to enter, but be sure to try and book tickets in advance if you can. Now, the actual ticketing process in Croatia isn't the easiest, um, so if you do have trouble trying to book them please let me know and i'll try and help you as best i can in the comments the links for the sites that i used which is the normal national park websites is in the description below and, and i strongly recommend that you buy them now as you work your way down the adriatic coast there's a small town that seems to be forgotten and it's a small and beautiful town called sibenik and it's certainly worth a visit it has some great restaurants bars and is one of the most prettiest towns I've ever seen and the best parts about staying in Sibenik is that it's so close to Kirka National Park. Now wherever you are in Croatia this national park is a must-see especially in summer and Sibenik is actually so close to Kirka that you can actually get a cab which only takes 20 minutes to the national park itself or what it does offer is a boat that you can get which leaves the heart the small little harbour up the stream to where the national park is though this does take longer i personally opted for the cab which was nice and quick you can easily spend most of the day there but as all tourist destinations are in the summer it will be busy but for me it wasn't so much so that it ruined the trip or wasn't worth seeing although you can book these tickets on the day i strongly recommend that you book in advance when i went it actually sold out so please 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 make sure that you book in advance i wouldn't want you to go there and then be disappointed. Now the park itself, for those who don't know, it's essentially just a small little national park where there's seven waterfalls. Um, but what the main reason why a lot of people go is at the end of the seventh waterfall, you can actually bathe in the river itself. Um, now because the water is alpine fed, um, it is bitterly cold. But when it's a nice hot sunny day, that doesn't matter. When I went, it was about 30 to 28 degrees um, and it was actually really, really nice to get into that cold water. But I'm saying that as a word of caution because some people may go in a slightly colder month. You might not get as a good of experience as you could have done unless you went in the summer. Now after visiting Sibenik, the next stop on the Adriatic coast on the trip that I'm recommending to you is Split, which is a beautiful city built in the ruins of a Roman palace. And in Split itself, you can easily spend four or five days just in this town. But for me, I would, if you go working your way down the Adriatic coast, I would recommend around three days. Now, one of the main things you can do in Split is take a number of boat trips from the harbor. One of the main ones that everyone seems to go to is an all day boat trip, which is about eight hours, um, which will take you to the Blue Lagoon, uh, to the Blue Cave, and take you to a wonderful town on one of the islands called Havar. Um, and this is a great day out. I personally didn't go on it. I just did it on a small, smaller boat trip because the partner I'm with isn't a massive fan of boats in the idea for her to be on a boat all day wasn't exactly great um, now you can book these in advance and i put some links in the description of this video but you can also book it on the day when you get there there's so many of tours that are just there waiting to take your bookings so don't feel like you have to do this in advance if you're unsure just go on the day and go and talk to some of these tours on the harbor and see what they say and another thing you can do in croatia is if you're a game of thrones fan they've got a number of filming destinations and there's actually a number of Game of Thrones tours that you can take from Split um, and one of the main places you can go to which you can go to yourself is to visit the Fortress of Cliss. This is just right out just outside of Split and it's right on top of a mountain and it has incredible views of Split itself and just for the view I would say it's definitely worth a visit. It's an inexpensive to go in and most of the castle is generally in ruins but it's still a cool place to go to and you can easily spend a few hours there so I do think this is worth a visit. The town of Split itself is absolutely beautiful and you deserves a day in itself just to explore all the wonderful sites that's on offer to you um, and there's a few other wacky places you can see. There's a place called Froggy Land which sounds a bit weird and it's essentially a guy about 100 years ago decided to stuff loads of dead frogs and have them do 
human things like play tennis and, and do in a courtroom. I think I have a picture of it right here. Um, bit of a bizarre thing, um, but it's, it, it, I had some, we had some free time and I think it was very, I think about four pounds to get in um, and it was quite a laugh. So I'd always recommend Froggy Land. Now, and as there is with Zadar, there's a number of great swim spots. And as I said, in, when I was talking about Zadar is there isn't many sand beaches. Now, because there are peb, they are pebble beaches, sometimes this can be quite painful in your feet as you're walking into the sea. So if this does bother you, it might be worth investing in some kind of footwear, though I know these look horrifically uncool, so that's kind of on you. Now, after your sea and spit, the logical place to go to would be Dubrovnik and spend some time there. I didn't manage to get to Dubrovnik in the time frame that I wanted to be in Croatia for, and I do plan on going back, so I can't sit there and tell you what to do in Dubrovnik because I simply haven't been there. Um, but if you were work your way all the way down the coast, these would be the destinations I would tell you to stop at. So I just explained exactly the trip that I would do going from north to south, and it's pretty self-explanatory, and hopefully I've described some of the best things you can do on your trip. But the question you might be asking is, well, how do I get around Croatia? And there's only really two ways that you can get around the country, and that is from hiring a car or taking coaches. Because of the terrain, there is no trains um, that run parallel to the coast all the way through these certain destinations that I've listed. If you were thinking of driving, the roads in Croatia are brand new and they're well maintained but the only thing that put me off is parking but all those beautiful medieval towns they're small and cramped and parking can be a little bit of a nightmare now if you feel that you can get around that by booking an airbnb or hotel which has parking available then that's great i just wanted to make it clear that that could be an issue you could run into and for me I didn't want to stress out about hiring a car and having all that, so I got around via coach. And, and most coaches are comfortable and they're quite modern. Um, and although I said I didn't want to have a car because of the stress of parking, one of the big reasons why I didn't get a car is because coaches are so cheap. So if you want to save a little bit of money, I would highly suggest using a coach to get around rather than hiring a car because the coaches will be significantly cheaper. And I booked all of these coaches through Flixbus, which is quite a well-known coach company in Europe. Sometimes your luggage isn't covered in the cost of your ticket and you have to pay usually when you turn up. But having said that, when I say you have to pay, I'm talking you have to pay like two pounds. It's not a lot of money. And each coast station isn't actually very far from the city center. It's walkable distance. So again, this is why getting a coach is a very, very good and easy option on your holiday. Now, one of the best things I want to share with you on this series is how to save money and money saving tips. And I'm gonna share a number of these for you for Croatia. Now, I talked kind of about some of them just now where I'm telling you to book coaches instead of hiring a car. So I've kind of already mentioned one. So the second one technically that I'm going to recommend to you is book Airbnbs instead of hotels. Now, that's generally a well-known thing to get cheap accommodation around the world. Airbnb is always a great choice. Um, but what I want to stress is that actually the difference between Airbnbs and hotels in Croatia isn't actually too different. They still have a star rated system, like a four star or three star, um, and it seems to be slightly different laws around it that there is in other places in Europe. I got some great deals in Croatia. So in Zadar, because it's a cheaper city, I was able to stay bang in the city center, but for split, um, I stay just outside the old town because the old town is split and you'll probably find this in Dubrovnik well, it's actually quite expensive. And to save a little bit of money, just to stay in a five minute walk from the main historic old town saves you so much money so that's another big money saving tip if you can stay in the old town do but if you can see the drum if you just look a little bit outside of the main tourist hub you'll find greater deals that you're able to do and if you stay quite close to the old towns and um, there's not much of a difference and one of the biggest ways for you to save money and this is kind of obvious is not going peak season the difference between July and August and June is massive. Although weather-wise, there's not much difference. But when I went in June, when I combine all the accommodation from the different towns and cities that I stayed in, per person it cost me about 200 pounds which is not a lot at all for a seven day trip. Now when I looked at the prices for the same accommodation that I was staying in June in August, prices had quadrupled so i'd always try and say if you're gonna go to croatia go in june this is the most cost effective time you can go to while still 
basking in the wonderful summer sunshine. Now, what I want to share with you is some useful apps that you can use on your holiday. Um, we all know Uber and some of you may already have that on your phone. This works in Croatia, so that is always worth to use. This is what I used when I was in Croatia and it was very helpful. Another thing that you can use is an app called Bolt, which is used in certain countries in Europe and it's exactly the same as Uber, um, but it's always good to have another option if you find it hard to find some Uber drivers in your area. Now, this isn't technically an app that I'm gonna to recommend to you, it's more of a credit card, but I'm still gonna recommend it again, and that is to download and get a Monzo credit card. Now, it isn't a normal credit card. Essentially what it is, is a travel currency card. Uh, I did another video um, about this in depth, which I'm just gonna link up here right now. Essentially all it does, it helps you get your current currency onto a card. So using the app, I'm able to transfer some hundred pounds, for example, onto it. And when it, when I, as I spend it, when I'm in a particular country, it then exchanges it as I spend. So what this means is that I'm actually able to save more money because, because we've all had it, we've gone to exchange our money and then when we come back, we try and exchange a little bit of the money we have. So we've exchanged it and exchanged it again. We've actually lost money in the end. Now, using the Monzo card, because it is an exchange until you spend it, if you've not used all the money, you just exchange it as pounds straight back to your account and it's there again and you've not lost any money. So this is why I always think it's a really good thing to have. And it's also for me a nice little um, safety net that if you do run out of money, all you need to do is just top up the card and you're off again. So if you can, get this Monzo card, please do. So that wraps up Croatia 101. This is just from my experience and what I feel is the best way to see the country. As some of you may have different answers to what I will disagree with what I said. And if that's the case, that's fine. Let people know down in the comments. As I've said, I want this channel to be a great travel information hub that we can all use and benefit. So if you have different experiences, please let me know. Croatia is just one of the best countries to visit in Europe. If you're watching this from America or different places and thinking of countries to visit, absolutely visit Croatia. It's absolutely stunning. It's one of the best countries in Europe that I've ever visited and I'm definitely going back. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give it a like if you found it helpful because uh, that really helps me out. Hit the notification button and the little notification bell and I'll hopefully see you in my next video. See you later.